Yesterday, we saw the conclusion of a thrilling 2023 World Athletics Championship. We got to see some of the hottest performances this year from the world's best. But that's not what we're here for today. I'm looking for the athletes that went above and beyond, winning gold when no one else thought they could. Today, let's look at the unexpected underdog victories at this year's World Athletics Championship in Budapest. The first standout on this list is Antonio Watson from Jamaica taking gold in the men's 400m at the young age of 21. The men's 400m saw a wild development this year. The two fastest performers in 2023 and only sprinters to have run sub 44 this season would both meet their ends before the finals with injury. Samu Konga from Zambia would have to pull out altogether before the champs, while the hot favourite and world leader this year, Stephen Gardner, would pull up her in the semi-final. This blew the field wide open, with no clear favourite. Yet, you still had the world record holder in Kirk, who had been having his best season since his injury in 2017. This year's Jamaican champ in Sean Bailey, who actually took out Watson at the Jamaican champs only a month ago, and Karani James, one of the most decorated 400m runners in history. But as we all know, the one to capitalise would of course be 21 year old Antonio Watson. He would run an impressive time of 44.22 to take a convincing win. The Jamaican's coming, he's closing, what a performance! But crashing to the track, Antonio... What makes it all the crazier is not only was this his first major senior championship, it was his first year breaking 46 seconds in the 400m. That's right, not 45 seconds. 46. He improved upon his 2022 PB by 2 seconds to get this gold. A huge underdog victory. Next we have is debatably the biggest underdog victory at the 2023 World Champs. This happened in the women's discus. Lagi Tosaga hailing from the USA. I heard you just got the high jump world record. What's that about? She came into the World Champs with a new personal best of 65.46 meters which she achieved at the US Track and Field Champs earlier last month. She was ranked 8th in the world and had never competed at a major senior competition. And yeah, 8th in the world doesn't sound like a major underdog, but the women's discus is a deceiving event. Between the 8th rank and the 1st rank is 5 meters. That's a 7% difference in performances. Throughout the series, the heavy favourite, Valerie Allman, was convincingly leading the competition, with two throws deep into the 68s. And to top it off, a fourth attempt throw of 69.23 meters, a distance only touched by herself and China's Bin Feng this year. That is until Tao Saga steps up in her fifth attempt to throw a massive personal best of 69.49 meters. In, heat in uh, round five, throws big. She throws very big. A lifetime best, 65 and a half meters. 69.49 That was a personal best of over 4 meters. She took the lead and the reactions were priceless. No one could match her and she walked away with one of the most unlikely gold medals in history. She was stoked and Allman was holding back in absolute rage. This was one of the coolest wins to watch live out of the entire world champs. Next we have the first athlete to triple gold in the sprints at a major since Usain Bolt. Noah Lyles from the USA. His 100m gold changed how we view him. He went from cocky, loudmouthed and overconfident to, holy shit, is he really going to break the 200m record? He's beyond decorated in the 200m, never having medaled at a senior major event in the 100m. He's truly been an average 100m runner among the elites forever. And prior to the world champs, he had a season's best of 9.94, placing him 21st in the world. And the overall general consensus was he was taking the 200m for sure, but when it comes to the 100m, he was being massively overlooked, and even clowned on at points for Brazenly posting his goal of running 9.65, an outrageous time that would make him number two all time. But I think the real reason in the public's lack of faith in him was he'd shown no real evidence that his subpar start would be any different. But shit. Did he walk the talk? He ran a personal best on the biggest stage, 9.83, convincingly taking the men's 100m over the likes of Fred Curley, the inhuman favourite and last year's world champ, and Inform Coleman, world champion from 2019, the recent explosion and world leader Zarnell Hughes, and the budding young phenom Letzile Tobogo. Then there's also the fact he beat out 10 other runners who had run sub 9.9 this season in the process. 
he may have been the lowest ranked gold medal winner from this year's world champs. The last major underdog of this year's world champs was Josh Kerr, representing the United Kingdom in the men's 1500 meter. Kerr had the 11th fastest time of the year heading into the champs, and is a bronze medalist winner from Tokyo two years ago, so he's got the experience. But heading into the men's 1500 meter, he had the monumental task of having to take down the prodigy, Jacob Ingebrigtsen. I mean, what is there to say? He's the previous Olympic champ, who was having the hottest season of his career, running the 1500 meter world lead at 3 minutes, 27 seconds and 14 milliseconds, this time making him the fourth fastest athlete of all time, and even breaking the European record. On top of all that, he was also undefeated this season, and he broke the monster two mile world record that stood for 26 years by Daniel Coleman. He was an overwhelming favorite to say the least. And then you can't look over the rest of the field. It was Katia, the 2022 world champs bronze medalist, running hot times. Nagus was finally blooming into his own this year. Chariot, the 2021 Olympic silver medalist was looking in form again. Kipsen, who does tend to miss out on podiums, was again looking hot. But Kerr was able to topple the odds in the most important race of the year, taking down the final boss, Ingebrigtsen, in an absolute nail biter. This will be an incredible upset, and it's going to happen again. Josh Kerr, with a performance of his lifetime, Ingebrigtsen loses again. Favourites don't always win, because these are the moments that inspire. It was a thrilling win against one of the most difficult 1500 meter fields in history. Now for some bonus underdogs, what I like to call the kind of upsets category. First is Richardson from the US taking out the Jamaicans in Tulu in the women's 100. I'm not sure much needs to be said. Prior to this champ, she was one of the hottest 100 meter stars in the strongest era of female sprinting history. Yet, even as one of the favourites, I feel like public opinion was skewed in favour of the Jamaicans and even other contenders in Tulu and Alfred. But against all odds and negative expectations from her previous failures, she took a historic win, running a time of 10.65, making her the fifth fastest female ever in the 100m. The shock on her face says it all. She was a top contender, but also not. Regardless, she pulled it off. There was also an unexpected win by Valletta from Serbia in the women's long jump. She's an experienced athlete in her event. She's 33, an Olympic bronze medalist, multiple Diamond League wins, and two World Indoor Champs goals. So yeah, she's decorated. But coming into this champs, she was ranked 15th equal in the world and was out of the conversation, with many other jumpers putting up huge numbers early in the year. But it was her who showed up big when the others couldn't, smashed out a new world lead, and took an unexpected gold. The last mention is Patterson from Australia, taking silver, not gold, in the women's high jump. She was last year's world championship gold medalist with a height of 202, but this year was entirely different. She suffered a broken foot six months before these world champs. Yet somehow, she managed to rehab her way back and show up for this world champs. She fought hard to stay in the mix with an on-fire Oli Slagas and Mahuknic. And near the end of the competition, she found her feet, jumping at 199 and ending herself a silver. A huge underdog medal with the right context. And those were my underdog picks. I'd like to hear who you had in the comments below.